Be smart, it's your money. The Undercover Contractor with Matt DeBarra. All right, it's Matt DeBarra, the Undercover Contractor. And today I have with me a friend and someone that I think is going to be really, really helpful. He's got some dirt. He's got some secrets um, that he's going to give us. His name is Mike. He's the owner of Golden Capital Insurance. Um, Mike is someone who is a workers' comp general liability guru. He's uh, extremely knowledgeable on all the things that that contractors should have in their policies, things that they should have covered, um, and how to structure those. And what I really admire about Mike and his company is his his ethics. Right, Mike is the type of guy where when we when we first met Mike and we we're like, hey, what do we need in our policy? It was not a situation where he was trying to compete on lowest price. He was like, these are the things you should carry to cover you, to cover your team, and to cover the client. So I really admired that. So Mike, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Matt. I'm really excited. So, you know, the goal of this episode is really going to be to kind of peel back the layers on where some of the contractors cut corners in the insurance world, right? Okay. Where they, um, where they might get a policy, you know, you, you put the policy in front of them and they're like, how do we cut this in half? Right. And you're forced mm -hmm. to say, well, these are your levers that you can adjust, but I wouldn't recommend it. So, um, you know, it's all about helping homeowners here. So mm -hmm. I think you're going to get, our listeners are going to get a lot, a lot of good, good tips. Okay. Um, but before we get into it, I know you've got a lot of experience, but I got a little surprise for you. I got a little surprise. So, mm -hmm. um, in front of you, you'll see here, I've got uh, a red solo cup, so one cup. Uh -huh. I've got two pieces of tape. Okay. Thanks for putting the timer up there. Uh, two pieces of tape. I've got four pencils, mm -hmm. uh, eight straws. Okay. So you're in the construction world, man. You're dealing with contractors. So uh, we're going to have a little game of uh, validation here. Okay. So here's how it works. You see the two minutes up on the board there? Yeah. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to sound it off, and I'll hold on to the tape measure. And you're going to have two minutes to make the tallest structure that you can, okay? And I'm going to measure it. So I got the tape measure right here. So at the end of two minutes, I'm going to measure whatever you can build using what you have here. So you got two pieces okay. of tape, straws, you got uh, pencils, and build the tallest structure. So okay. any questions before we get started? No, let's do it. All right, good stuff. So let's kick this off in three, two, one, go. All right, flipping the cup over. He's all right. Interesting. Scissors in the cup. Scissors on top. Very methodical. I like this. Without falling, right? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And you got the pencils too. Tape, straws. Interesting. So he's got the scissors upside down in the red cup. All right. So we got two pencils next to the scissors. Okay, I've never seen this one before. I like this. All right. So three pencils taped around the scissors. Okay. All right, get that regulated it around here. Sorry, Strong foundation. <laughs> I like it. I'll tell you what the record is after this when we measure. Okay. Okay, so we're taping the highest pencil and we're gonna tape a straw to that pencil. Okay. Come on, the arts and crafts here. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> I love it though. You're persistent. Okay, so we have three straws. All right. We got about 30 seconds left. All right, so we're going for we're going for quantity here. <laughs> we lost a couple straws. Good stuff. I'm out of tape. He's out of tape. Okay. We're going to have to recycle some of that tape. Yep. So we got four pencils and 10 seconds left. 8 7 6 4 3 2 one time. Ah. What do we got? <laughs> All right. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> so let's get the measurement here. Let's kick this over. All right. So let's see what we got here. Any guesses as to the, t to the height? Uh, 10 inches. About 11. Almost. Sir. Okay. 11 inches. Good stuff, Mike. Close. Good stuff. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh huh. So 
I want to uh, I want to dive in. That was good. That was good. I feel like I know you better now. Thanks. Oh, I don't know if that's a good way to know me with that Arson Craft in front of you, but so I'll take it. So tell me, I mean, what you're 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 the guy who sees something that I mean, what you have to offer here is going to be gold. Mm -hmm. So so tell me, what what do you see that's valuable to homeowners? Where where are contractors cutting corners? Where are they doing things where, at the end of that meeting, you're like, I can't hire this person. Well, I, I think you should first ask them if they even have insurance in the beginning. And if they do have insurance, the most important thing to ask them is to see what exclusions they have on their policy. Because obviously price is good and they want to save money, but you have to understand, you have to know what you're protecting. So for example, some homeowners, they have exclusions where they don't offer new construction. So God forbid, if someone comes at your house to do a job and there's a claim and it's under new construction, the the homo the co the contractor is not covered so that could fall back on the, on you because you're hiring them and let's say God forbid something happens to your house you're not covered and um, also when it comes to workers comp you want to make sure that the contractor you're hiring has employees W two employees because if the never W two employee works for a contractor they're more obligated to get the job done you know they have good employees credible employees with experience. Um, and whenever they have workers comp on their employees, you know, they're not trying to cut corners. Yeah. I'm just laughing because I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, how many times have, you know, contractors like, you know, they've, they've come in and they've negotiated a policy rate with you. And then they're, they're wearing a nice shirt and I'm just, I'm laughing in my head because I'm thinking of a story of a, a, a time when we, we had quotes compared and they literally had almost no coverage whatsoever. Exactly. Right. And I'm, yeah. and, and the client was like, well, they're going to do the same work. Exactly. Right? And when we, we started peeling it apart, it was like, do you see the difference in this policy? Of course. You know, it's tens of thousands of dollars a year more that we pay in premiums to be able to offer this coverage. Of course. And then the light bulb went off and she was like, oh, okay. I understand now. Yeah. So when you say, when you're talking about the policy, are you referring to workers comp or general liability? Like let's talk about those two things separately and kind of what they are. Right. So yeah, so general liability is uh, basically a policy that covers you in case uh, a contractor does a job and something bad happens to the property, like a damage. Um, so again, the exclusions are very, very, very important mm -hmm. because again, the exclusions say what's covered and what's not covered. So mm -hmm. it's very important to ask the contractor, hey, can I see a copy of your policy? Just want to make sure that all the coverages are included to protect me in case something happens to the property. Got it. So what what are we what are we looking for? So let, let's say I'm a homeowner, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm getting a quote from this contractor, right? What talk me through the process here, right? So I'm getting quotes. What's what's normal in your experience, right? So let's use the example of a roof, right? right. I'm gonna get a roof done, and mm -hmm. so roofer comes out. When do you suggest we ask to see insurance? What are some of the questions? Like, let's let's get into specifics. Like, what? Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. So with a roofer, you should ask them: Do they even have insurance at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Ask them if they have workers' comp insurance. If they have workers' comp insurance, you know he's a legit contractor because he's paying for insurance. And if he's paying for insurance, you know he actually cares to get good employees to protect himself. Mm -hmm. And also for general liability, you should see if there's any uh, roof exclusions, like open roof exclusions. For so, for example, let's say God forbid they're working on the job and there's an open roof and something bad happens you're not going to be covered for that so you have to make sure exactly what the exclusions are on the policy um how what it covers and all the whole nine yards okay so my roofer's out here and i'm talking with him and i'm asking him these things do you suggest that i see the policy because what what I, what I found too and i'm sure you know we probably see it more on our end is is some of these contractors are like yeah i have we're covered Right, we're covered. So how do we validate? I mean, because you see the the nuts and bolts, the of back course. end, right? Um, a certificate of insurance, and also again, very important, the exclusions on the general liability policy. Mm. There's a separate page on every policy. I know policies have eighty to ninety pages, yeah. But the most important pages are the exclusions to see exactly what is covered, what is not covered. So, so I I go to my roofer, right? I meet with them, I ask them my questions, mm -hmm. and I'm like, hey, you know, this all sounds good. Do you have workers' comp and do you have general liability? Those are the two main ones that you'd you'd say we should be looking out for. Hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at general liability insurance and workers' comp, and then what about the contractor's bond? Do you think that's important too? Oh uh, yeah, it's important as well. Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking f to make sure that they have a contractor's bond, mm -hmm. general liability and workers' compensation. Correct. Right. Yeah. So they, they're all, you know, let's say that they're they're like, yeah, I got all that, I got all that. So that's great, right? So then you're saying, all right, what we should be doing after that is we should be then 
taking um, that information, right? Noting it down. If they say they don't have workers comp, we don't need to ask for a policy, obviously. Mm -hmm. But if they do, we're saying, okay, send us your policy. And do we ask for the exclusions or are they already in there? Uh, the exclusions are on the general liability policy. Mm -hmm. Workers comp, there's no exclusions on anything. They pay up to the roof. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you have to see the exclusions definitely on your general liability policy. It's very, very, very important. I don't think a lot of homeowners really understand the value of seeing exactly what they're getting themselves into when it comes to coverage. So it's very important to see the exclusions on all their uh, general liability policies. Got it. Now, what are some of, you know, I tell, I tell clients and I'm not, I'm not at all the expert, right? That's why we have you here. Mm -hmm. um, but I tell them, I say, look, a couple areas to think about is height mm -hmm. and depth of digging, right? Because right. those are two, two areas that we, we've talked about this before for even my own, my own policies. But yeah, what would you say are some hot ticket items that, you know, when, because for example, right, imagine we own we own this home and we've got lots of things we need to do, right? And they could be as simple as I need to swap out a toilet all the way up to I need to re-roof my house, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think in this busy world, we want to understand and associate risk, right? Mm -hmm. So if somebody's swapping out perhaps a toilet or, or a sink faucet head, right? Mm -hmm. We might not be as concerned with going through every single exclusion. Not to say it's not important. Of course, but yeah. And then there's certain jobs like I'm spending a hundred grand on a new roof, right? Mm -hmm. And I need to do a lot of work. Um, in these exclusions, what what are some some hot ticket like what are what are some jobs where you see a lot of issues and a lot of exclusions that come up? Very good question. So height exposure is definitely an exclusion. Uh, new construction is definitely an exclusion. Mm. Tracked uh, home is definitely an exclusion. Also condos is also an exclusion, and also um, open roof is an exclusion. Um, I see everything, but the the biggest the biggest ticket I see is height exposure, um, underground exposure, and new construction. And just to be clear, so these are areas where basically what happens is contractor comes to you says, "Hey, Mike, I want to get insurance." Mm -hmm. Right? They tell you a little bit about what they do. Mm -hmm. You're like, "Hey, based on what you do, this is the policy that you should have." Right? Correct. Yeah. And then this is where you're seeing contractors say, "Well, I don't work on condos." I don't do anything over X amount of feet, right? Because mm -hmm. these are all the things that that they pull off the policy to save money, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're basically saying that when you when you send them this policy, right, and you're doing it out of ethics, right? Because you're hundred percent. Yeah. I'm not. I mean, as from another business owner to another business owner, you know, I'm trying to help out the business. Yeah. Yeah. And whenever I present the quotes, I always I always specifically specify, you know, here are the exclusions, so they know exactly what they what they're getting themselves into. I sold the policy. Um, on Thursday, and this one contractor was like, "Hey, Mike, I like the policy, but I really want to make sure I'm covered correctly." I'm like, "Okay." So he sent me over his policy of what he's paying right now, and I said, "You know, these are the exclusions." He's like, "Oh, really? I did not know that." I'm like, "You know, I mean, it's that's why it's very important for me to see exactly what you're being covered, and the whole nine yards." So, and, and I can tell you even from experience, and and this is I think great for for homeowners to know, you know, as someone who owns a construction company, right? The, it's it's hard enough even just doing the right thing, right? It's hard to really understand. I mean, you have to actively, and I, I really want that, you know, this is why I'm so, I like, I am so happy and excited to have you here, truly. Like, I think what we're going to talk about now and what we've covered is absolute gold. But, you know, it's hard enough if you're doing the right thing to know that you have all the nuanced coverages, right? Like we do yeah. masonry, we do concrete, we do below ground, we do above ground, we work for condos, we work for municipalities, right? Yeah. So all of those things have these subcategories of the exclusions. And you've, you know, you've made it really easy to understand, you know, these are the things that you don't have on your policy. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, well, I need this one, I need this one, I need this one, I need this one. But I wanna stress for homeowners, it's hard enough for a contractor doing the right things with the right um, you Co know, coverages, insurance yeah. coverages. Yeah. Um, so, you know, when you have people that want to cut corners, it, it really is in your best interest to take this time. So we're going to ask to see general liability exclusions on projects. Um, what about, is there any other key things you think we need, need to know when it comes to general, like what's a total policy that we should have, you think, or want to see? Um, also another piece of coverage is also inland marine coverage. I'm not sure if it's more towards the homeowners but it's tools for contractors so if you have contractors who want to who have tools they store at your house mm. just make sure they have in the marine coverage because in the marine coverage is for the tools so it offers if they break so nice. it's someone steals it they're covered there as well okay yeah. so inland marine coverage for the tools mm -hmm. so so now now we've got our general liability 
Um, and we're going to be asking, look, I want to see your general liability policy. Now, talk me through, right? Because even even me, if I'm not, you know, um, freshened up on it, right? Mm -hmm. I look at the policies and I know that like homeowners associations, for example, they always request your, your GL. I don't think general liability. I don't think I've ever had a homeowner's insurance uh, excuse me, a homeowner association working for condos ever requests to see the exclusions on the policy. Now, does that come out when when you ask to see a certificate mm -hmm. of general liability, right? Mm -hmm. Does it always come with exclusions? Um, whenever the vendor sends a certificate request, they have basically the job what they're doing and sometimes they show the exclusion. So basically, Whenever I get a certificate request, I look at the certificate, I see what they need, the coverage limits, and what the exclusions are. So, yes, they do. Got it, got it, got yeah. it, got it, got it. Okay, so so we've got we've got our general liability policy. Um, I think this is gold. I I think this is you know th this is so important to get out there. Very important. Yeah. Do you see when you when you have contractors come in? Um, and mm -hmm. we, I will never ask you names, of course. Mm -hmm. But of course. do you see contractors that are like, hey, this premium's a little high. What can I do here? Yeah, it, they do. And do you find that they're, you know, you find that perhaps they're they're cutting things that they need coverage for? Uh, yeah, I do sometimes. It's all case by case. But yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes clients send me their policy, say, hey, you know, I'm paying high. Like, what's the reason? Then I go over the exclusions and I see what's going on. And I, I sometimes give them advice. I say, hey, Mike, I have a job coming up. Um, I'm going to be going over, you know, 30 feet. You, you suggest I get this policy. Um, and then, yeah, everything I see, it's all case by case. Yeah, no, no, that makes total sense. That makes total sense. But yeah. but there are contractors out there that, you know, uh, aren't necessarily, you know, pulling in the coverage they need. And what I want to emphasize too is, and you know this, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is your world, mm -hmm. is that some of these coverages aren't cheap. Yeah, they're not cheap at all, especially in California. <laughs> yeah. They beat you up. Yeah, so, you know. so you're really relying on what we're relying on, right? If I'm wearing my homeowner hat for a second, is we're relying on the ethics of the contract. I always talk about ethical contracting. Of course, yeah. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, it's your house. You want to make sure you're, com you're covered from A to Z with the correct contractor. Let, let's talk worst case scenario, general liability here. Mm -hmm. You said, uh, let's use a height exclusion, right? Mm -hmm. What's a typical height exclusion cutoff? Um, 30 to 40 feet. I've seen, th yeah, 30 to 40 feet. Let's say I got a 35 foot high. Now, is that from the peak of the roof? Is that top top height? Top height, yeah. Okay. Max height, yeah. Okay. So from the peak of the roof, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. um, but and obviously we won't won't be able to cover everything here. But but I think so. We've got the peak of the roof. Let's say the peak of the roof is 35 feet, mm -hmm. and we have an issue. Contractor. Uh, let's let's go through uh, something that I've seen in in, in my world. Um, we were on a project and contractor had uh you know stripped down the roof mm -hmm. we had a freak rainstorm come in low mm -hmm. percentage of rain we got you know just in one area you know that happens you get a pocket sometimes of heavy of rains yeah flooded the house mm -hmm. their max height coverage is 30 feet what mm -hmm. happens typically i mean what now my house right i've got moisture i got water i got clean up i'm all stressed out like what what did i just mess up on or what what's my risk as a homeowner at this point hey the risk as a homeowner is you should have made sure that the contractor, you know, you should have made it clear to the contractor to say, hey, this is what I want to do. This is how high I'm going to go. This is the kind of work I want to do. And yeah, I mean, it all goes back to the, the exclusion to see exactly what is covered and what is not covered. Now, let's say it's not covered though, because we said in this case, 35 foot yeah. high roof. You don't want to know what happens when it's not covered. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell um, me. <laughs> what it, happens? It, it could get messy. It's it, it's basically like a lawsuit where you, you bring it to the to the insurance carrier and also to the to the broker who signed you up for that policy. Really? Yeah. Got it's, it's it, not, got it. It's not pretty. So, I mean, what, so you're talking long drawn out processes. Would, do you find that homeowners insurance will jump in and cover a lot of these things or? Um, with homeowners, it's case by case. Yeah. Uh, every homeowner, every homeowner insurance company has different, ex different exclusions. So it's all case by case. Makes sense. No, no. And, and I think, you know, one disclosure here that I, I want to emphasize is this is not, you know, we're, we're not here giving insurance advice. We're not telling you, you know, we can't cover every nuance, you know, some of these pages uh, or excuse me these packets are like we were talking about before we started i mean they're 60 70 80 pages yes. long for for small companies with you know basic policies so um the goal here is not to give you kind of every case you know to 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 those listening the goal here is to say look these are the areas where there's high risk and and i think you know like you said takeaway messages um 
you know, make sure you're asking about what's not included. Now, how do I know if I'm, uh, and I think this is one that I've seen, I want to ask your opinion on it. Mm -hmm. Contractors working outside of scope. Basically, oh, so in, in, in those case, contractors that are not working by the book, they, they tend to have, you know, they they tend to not do things by the book, which results to them, you know, not doing a good job at the end of the day. If they don't do a good job, they just can't come for the paycheck and they leave. That's That really affects the contractor because the employees that they're bringing, you know, under the table, it's... It's just a mess. They don't work ethically. They cut corners. And again, you're kind of paying. You're kind of getting. Yourself, you're kind of paying for what you're getting yourself into. If you go for like a cheap contractor with no insurance, and these day laborers, it could result to chaos. It could result to you know not, you know, not hundred percent of work that they promised you. Now uh, there was a a story I remember. Uh, we we had to fix a a big stone project, mm -hmm. and what happened was a tree. They tried to cut down a tree. Tree fell on a stone wall um oh, wow. but it was a maintenance company and so they had given their general liability policy but they weren't authorized to do this type of work so what mm -hmm. what advice would you give if we're saying okay you know policy at face value looks good mm -hmm. i don't see any exclusions that would necessarily um you know necessarily warrant concern but how do i know that they're you know how would you suggest uh, making sure that they're within their their licensed or insured scope, right? Because there's also services too. Right. So you're talking about another company working on that field or is it the same company? Same company. So they were li licensed to do general maintenance work mm -hmm. and they were cutting down trees and they weren't licensed. They didn't have the landscaping license to be able to do that. Wow, well, yeah. So they weren't covered. Obviously, insurance isn't covering them because it, it's not under... How do, you, how do you navigate or how would we prevent that from happening? Um, so basically, if they're doing a job that's not under scope, you should just reach out to the broker and be like, hey, you know, this is the kind of work I want to do. I want to add this classification on my policy just to make sure I'm covered. Because if if that's the case, he's misclassified. And whenever something's misclassified, it's always not good to the insurance companies. Now, he, the, in this case, they had a, a business card that said, you know, general maintenance, handyman repairs, tree trimming, tree removal, right? Mm -hmm. So how do I know? I mean, obviously, I'm looking up, you know, I talk about this in the book, mm -hmm. you know. Um, how do I know in terms of... Um, you know, them being under the right license classification. I mean, obviously we run the license, we make sure, mm -hmm. but do you find that that's, where's the biggest kind of lever pull? Do you find that it's it's them, you know, shortchanging? Exactly. The yeah. So what I see from most of uh, the contractors that I work with, I'm getting them insurance, they're very misclassified. Mm. Whenever they're misclassified, they say, oh, hey, Mike, you know, I got a good price. Can you beat it? I'm like, you know, I, I can't beat it because it's it's you're comparing apples to oranges. It's like having a guy that does tree work, you know, licensed as like a, a, like an electrical guy or a general general contractor, licensed as someone that's doing tree work. You have to make sure that you're classified correctly. It's crazy because some of these some of these contractors who who don't really value what they're paying for, they just look at it and they say, okay, it's cheap. I'm going to go with it. But they really have to, you know get into the details and the scope of what exactly they're paying for. Got it. Yeah. Now, real quick here, because um, I want to wrap this up, but I think we we touched a lot on the general liability stuff. I mean, this is phenomenal. Like, I really mm. appreciate you coming here and being open about this topic because I think this is, this is part of the undercover contractor is getting the stuff that contractors we have access to, right, and getting it out mainstream. It's like, course, you know, yeah. it shouldn't just be reserved for, for people in the industry. Workers' comp. Mm-hmm. So workers' comp, workers' comp, it, it's a very underrated topic when it comes to homeowners because with workers' comp, whenever you hire a contractor, you want to make sure that contractor has, you know, W-2 employees because if they have W-2 employees, employees are more entitled to work well with a contract, uh, with their their company because they get good benefits, they get good pay, and they get paid up to pay time, sick, sick pay time off, um, just the general employee benefits. And whenever they get that, they tend to, you know, work more and work better and more loyal to their to their boss. First 1099 employees where they just come in and out. They don't really care about the job. They just come, they do, you know, half half ass work. Sorry about the language. No. Um and yeah, it's ten it's it's always important to have W two employees when when it comes when it comes to workers' comp because they're more entitled to work. Yeah, and workers' comp, you know, when we run the license, we can see whether or not they're workers' comp exempt, mm -hmm. right? And that's, I think, what you're referring to. So exempt means 
they don't have any employees. They're a sole Correct. owner, operator, worker. Yeah, and right? also I see a lot that um, contractors who have workers comp, the license is expired. So it's very uh, important, you know, to look up their license, see if they have active insurance because a lot of the times they're expired. Hmm. And sometimes they say, hey, Mike, you know, can you get me insurance? I say, yeah, I could. Then whenever I look at their license, they say, oh, you know, the license is expired. And they, you know, and then I don't hear back from them after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's very important to, you know, make sure they're completely, you know, have their license and completely insured and all that. So we're running the license. We're looking at whether or not it's active. If mm -hmm. they're exempt, there shouldn't be ever more than just that person, that owner on the job, right? Because exempt allows that one person to work, but that's it. Yeah, if they're exempt, just know that you, 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 probably won't be getting the best work because if they're exempt, so you have to understand they're not paying workers' comp. And whenever they get a job and they're not paying workers' comp insurance, they're going to find day laborers. And again, you know, imagine you as a day laborer working, you know, for a guy who adds, gives you no security, no mm -hmm. value, no protection, and you just bring him on the job. You're going to be like, you know what? This guy isn't taking care of me. I'm not going to work hard for him. Mm. And again, yeah. the day laborers are not getting compensated correctly to the industry compensation. So they tend not to work, you know, to the best of their ability and also the experience. I mean, if you have a house, right, and you, and you hire a contractor and you see he doesn't have insurance and you see he's bringing guys, you know... I don't know. You it's it, it's it's not it's not by the book. So whenever it's not by the book, and you're bringing those guys in, it's going to result to you know not a good job one, at the end result for your one for your thing. Homes. I yeah. I see a lot, and I, and I love for for the listeners to get this feedback too. Is I see a lot of general contractors. Mm -hmm. They don't have workers comp, mm -hmm. right? They're just them. It's mm -hmm. one 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 person. One right? man shop, yeah. Yeah, one man shop, right? Or or woman shop, right? And uh, you know, and what they're doing is they're subcontracting the work. Mm -hmm. So obviously what homeowners should do in this case is they should say, well, I want the workers comp certificates of all of your subcontractors, right? Right. Because yeah. we need to make sure there's coverage at some end, you know, some point. Like when I work under general contractors, you know, I'm constantly being asked, right? You know, Matt, I need I need your workers comp to show to the, this homeowner, right? Uh -huh. So um I, I think one of the one of the big takeaway message here here is that somewhere along the lines, if somebody's doing work on your house, unless you have this rare instance where it's a super small company, it is an owner operator and it's that one person and they show up, quote, your sink repair, and then they show up and do all the work and they don't have a helper, they have nothing else. Unless it's that, you should be looking at workers comp certificates. Hundred percent, right? yeah. Yeah. And if you're subcontracting the work, yeah. I mean, you have to understand if you're subcontracting the work and you're requesting a certificate of insurance, you always know that is a good sign because the insurance carriers, they're not going to insure somebody who doesn't have a license. Mm. So whenever you get the certificate of insurance for the subcontractors and they have insurance, that you know that the insurance company did a background check on them, making sure that they have experience in their license. So you know that those are credible you know, people to, to bring on board to work yeah. on your job. Yeah. Is there any other? So we covered, we covered workers' comp. Um, you know, we cover general liability. Are there any other areas where you see, you know, that, that homeowners need to be educated and protected and feel empowered to ask these questions? I mean, is there any other, you know, areas where, th where they should be digging a little deeper? Um, not necessarily more, but asking more questions. Nice. You have to be asking questions. I mean, if somebody's coming in your house and they're, and they're knocking down walls or knocking down roofs or everything, you want to make sure you ask every single question you want because at the end of the day, it's your house. You want to make sure you're, you're properly covered. Yeah, and I and I see this. You know, I see this happen all the time, right? Like we'll be part of a a, a big renovation project, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you'll have six or seven trades there, and you can tell three or four of them company shirts. They're doing safety meetings in the beginning of the day. Mm -hmm. You can tell. I mean, we know, right? And in, in in my world, I can tell. I can spot licensed versus unlicensed, workers comp versus day late, you know, W2 versus More of the day culture labor. you can see. Yes, yeah, exactly. so you see the culture, you see it. But to the untrained eye, if you're not doing this every day, um, it's really hard to spot. And so, you know, one tip I think Mike's given us here is saying, look, every single trade that you have that's doing work on your house. So you hire this general contractor, right? Mm -hmm. And they're going to do this remodel, right? Mm -hmm. You've got plumbing work, you've got electrical work, you've got masonry and concrete work. We should be seeing uh, workers comp and general liability certificates for every single subcontractor. 
Hundred percent. To understand their exclusions. Yeah, to understand the exclusions and making sure that these guys know what they're doing. I'm so excited. I mean, I think this is gonna help. I mean, this is gonna help so much. I, I think this is the stuff. I mean, this is literally why you know why we're doing this here. The, the whole yeah. undercover contractor is what we just talked about. So of I really I appreciate you doing this, Mike. I think you know. I think we've saved some people listening here tens of thousands of dollars in headaches and litigation and problems and hundred you know, percent, yeah. I just you know I, I thank you because not everybody's willing to to kind of really peel back the curtain and say these are the things we see. Of course, yeah. I mean, I'm always here to help out homeowners. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't like people you know not getting what they deserve. At the end of the day, they need to be covered correctly. They need to know what the what they're getting themselves into because you're paying a lot of money. I mean, someone coming in your house doing construction, you want to make sure he does a damn good job at it because you don't want to come back home, um, you know, coming, not being happy. Well, I think you do a damn good job, Mike. So um, I Thank really you. do. You know, I, I know it's it's uh, you know you're you're talking about a lot of a lot of controversial stuff here, and I just appreciate being open, being honest, and and uh, yeah, I think this opens the conversation up, and and uh, you know, slowly but surely, we're gonna start changing the dynamic of how this all works. So sure. I, I really appreciate, it, Mike. I really do. Thanks for being here. No problem. Thank you for having me, Matt. Cool.